inglese? Un popolo che noi abbiamo sempre molto apprezzato. It's getting late, so I will not talk for very long. Uh, uh, the uh, referendum result on the 23rd of June was a great democratic victory, and it opens possibilities for progress in the Republic of Ireland, and my own state as well. I have been working on this paper, uh, a report uh, of a study group on how the Brexit referendum might be accompanied by I exit Ireland exiting the EU, which I think may well be possible down the line. And uh, attached to this are two short articles which I wrote, one on the left in Europe and the other on internationalism and nationalism. And uh, my wife there has copies which are available if, if, if you care to uh, uh, have a look at this document. Um, To win a referendum, one must, of course, have people on the right and on the left. It's an illusion to think otherwise. People on the right respond to right-wing arguments, people on the left respond to left-wing arguments, and of course it was so in the Brexit referendum as well. The British ruling establishment, symbolised especially by the Conservative Party, was of course divided, hugely divided. And that's been a development of the last 30, 40 years. It was the Americans pushed the British into the European Union. They forced Macmillan to apply to join the European Economic Community in 1961. And uh, Britain did join in 1973 under American pressure. And the British at, the, at that time thought that they could either divide France from Germany or else they could be co-opted by France and Germany to run the European community as a kind of triumvirate, three-person rule. That was their illusion. They failed, the British establishment, in those two aims. They failed to divide France from Germany. They failed to be co-opted by France and Germany to run the EU as a triumvirate. And that, I think, is at the root of disillusionment among large sections of the British ruling class and establishment, particularly in the Conservative Party. As somebody said, all significant debates in British politics take place inside the Tory party, and most other people have just bit parts. And that is true over imperial preference in the olden days, over appeasement of Germany in the 1930s, and over relations with the European Union in the last 40 years. So the Tory party was divided. Cameron, the mainstream, the government, wanted to stay in the EU. They were supported by finance capital. Goldman Sachs gave a quarter of a million pounds to the Remain campaign. The City of London likewise. So the 17 million British voters voting to leave the EU was a huge democratic victory, a slap in the face uh, to, to reaction. Uh, it represented a victory for those elements in the Conservative Party who wanted to take back control, which was the main slogan of the principal leave group, take back control. Uh, a group, incidentally, that had two joint chairmen, uh, Mr. Michael, Michael Gove, who was a Tory, and Gisela Stewart, who was a Labour MP. But of course, Labour was a very weak force. There was only one major trade union on the Leave side. That's the RMT trade union. There are something like 200 Labour members of Parliament, but only 15, one five of those, were in favour of Brexit. So, uh, it, it's a complicated situation. And of course, as in all uh, uh, referendums, you're left and right. The immigration issue was quite an important issue, but that was just one aspect of taking back control. It's very important that a, a country and a government should be able to decide who can come into it and on what uh, principles. At present, as you know, there are 500 million citizens in the European Union. Every one of them is entitled to go by law to everyone else's country. And that, of course, is a unique situation comparable to what you have in a federal state. I suggest that on this immigration question, two issues are always being mixed up, two principles. The 
The first principle is that you have, one has no right to go to other people's country. In international law, it's only if you're a genuine refugee do you have a right to go to another country. So a, a, a state or a country has the right to control who comes into it, either because they want to keep up wage rates, they fear that the wages might be cut if there's a huge influx of, it, of, of, of immigrants, or to keep the homogeneity of a community. There are various reasons. But countries have the right to control who come into it. The second principle is, of course, that once you're in a, a country, you should be treated the same as everybody else. There should be equality between whoever comes in and the, uh, 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 and the people. And these two principles are continually being confused and mixed up. So that was one of the issues in the referendum, but by no means I think the most important, but it was one aspect of taking control. And that, of course, is the fundamental democratic issue that was involved, that the laws for the United Kingdom of Britain and Northern Ireland should be made by those who are elected to make them, Instead of vast numbers of laws, something like 1,500 directives, 2,000 regulations, 40,000 judgments of the Court of Justice, and so many international norms, all of these are legally binding on all EU citizens as aspects of supranational law. So they wanted to take back control. And with luck, other countries will emulate them, will copy them. The Republic of Ireland, our establishment, our ruling uh, elite has been thrown into a uh, deep crisis by the result of the Brexit referendum. There's consternation, and not only in Ireland, but of course elsewhere in the European Union. The victory uh, uh, for the Brexit people on June the 23rd was not only a, a blow to Cameron, a blow to Goldman Sachs, a blow to the financial interest, it was a blow to America. America's policy was to keep Britain in the European Union. It was a blow to the City of London. The financial interest which cost us here, uh, pointed out, is hugely important in Britain. And likewise, it is true, Britain in the last 30 or 40 years has become deindustrialized significantly, and it was the industrial, the working class people in the old industrial centers who said we have had enough, and they gave much of the popular base to the, the Brexit vote. So it was a very uh, democratic and important breakthrough. It's full of potential, but of course every attempt will be made to overcome it, to prevent it, to fudge it, and that is a battle which the British people uh, have to face in the coming period. But we all should try and take advantage of it, and certainly in the Republic of Ireland, my own country, uh, we, will, we will attempt to do so. Because we do two-thirds of our trade outside the EU, we are very much dependent on Britain. Uh, one third of Irish trade goes to Britain. If the United Kingdom of Britain and not the Northern Ireland, which of course is part of the island of Ireland, if they leave the, uh, the European Union, there's huge implications for the Irish state and uh, already significant social interests and economic interests in the Republic of Ireland are beginning to say if the British go, uh, go this way we must go with them because of our important economic dependence on the United Kingdom market. We do two thirds of our trade outside the EU if the British leave it. We're quite different from all the other Eurozone countries where half or more of their trade is done with one another. So I leave it at that. Thank you very much.